Hi, I'm Rob Salerno and I'm here with Caribbean Canadian activists Maurice Tomlinson and Michael Went, who are organizing uh, a conference during World Pride called Realizing the Caribbean Dream of Inclusion. It's happening June 23rd. And uh, Maurice, why don't you tell us what this conference is about? Well, the conference is aimed at trying to mobilize the Caribbean LGBT community and allies in the diaspora in Canada to try and, as the name suggests, realize the Caribbean dream of inclusion, to use the skills, the exposure, the, the, the kind of um, atmosphere of inclusion that they've been, they've been free to experience in Canada and transport that back home in whatever shape or form they think is most appropriate. Can you, uh, can you give our viewers some kind of, uh, like a, maybe a little bit of an overview of what the status is on the ground in, uh, I guess in Jamaica, which is where you're from. Um, I know a couple of years ago the new Prime Minister, uh, Portia Simpson Miller, had pledged to uh, uh, have a vote on repealing the, uh, the buggery law. Um, is that is that something that uh, did that ever happen? Uh, is it something that activists are still pushing for? Well, the reality is that the Prime Minister reneged on that promise on April 4 this year. She basically said that the law would not be reviewed anytime soon because it wasn't a priority for the majority of Jamaicans. Um, majority of poor Jamaicans is what she said. And so the legislative framework remains intact. The situation is that persons who are MSM can face up to 10 years in prison at hard labor for any form of intimacy. Michael, why don't you tell us uh, what are some of the things that you're hoping to accomplish at this conference? Uh, I'm hoping to accomplish engagement of the Caribbean diaspora here in Canada. That we can answer the question, what can we do? What can I do to help realize the dream of Caribbean inclusion? So for example, we, have, we do business in the Caribbean. We have family ties in the Caribbean. We can visit as tourists. Uh, there are many other ways in which we have a connection to the Caribbean, even if we're living here, born here, raised here, like myself. You know, one of the things that I, I think is uh, really interesting about the region um, is that uh, as far as LGBT issues are concerned, uh, there are still a number of countries in the Caribbean that are uh, tied to European countries uh, politically or legally, um, you know, to the extent that uh, the countries that are still related to France and the Netherlands even have same-sex marriage and anti-discrimination laws passed in Amsterdam and in Paris, uh, but, you know, imposed on these communities. I mean, it, it seems like a perfect example of these, these sort of uh, colonial, like it, it is still colonial mm -hmm. attitude or, or relationship happening here. Um, and how can, how can that, uh, th this change come from the ground up rather? Is that, is that something yes. that... Yes. Um, definitely we would prefer to have the community come together around tolerance instead of it being imposed because that makes it more sustainable. Because it's one thing to have great laws. South Africa has possibly the most inclusive constitution, but it has some of the most horrendous attacks against LGBT. So unless there's going to be some sustainable support for um, anti-discrimination, tolerance training, or you know, in schools, etc., then those kinds of impositions are not sustainable. And what we're trying to do through this kind of engagement, as Michael appropriately called it, is to encourage persons to reach out to their friends, family, you know, colleagues back home to say, this is the experience I am having living in an inclusive society. These are the benefits of living in an inclusive society. And uh, this is what it can mean for Jamaica and for the rest of the Caribbean to do this. We need to have this kind of dialogue ourselves, amongst ourselves, with ourselves, with our politicians, instead of having it exclusively. I'm not saying that impositions are always wrong, <laughs> because they certainly have opened the door for the states, for example, that are French and Dutch, to go beyond just imposing these marriage laws to now um, imposing a sort of anti-discrimination regime. Th that's definitely you know, a step in the right direction. But it's also imperative that the persons engage emotionally and that can only come through experience. We can't underestimate the role of culture in this, in this discussion. It's not just about laws, it's right. also about uh, the arts, whether it be theater or music or right. dance. Uh, we can think also about business and the role that tourism can play, the role that uh, employee organizations and global companies can play. So there are uh, multiple levels at which we're hoping to attract um, and engage people at whatever level they're at. And it must also have an impact on, on the local diaspora community here in Canada as well to see uh, Caribbean Canadians standing up and, and uh, 
you know, demanding or, or um, standing up for, for LGBT rights and issues. Uh, does it, it is, is that like, does it help change attitudes at home as well? And is that, is that a priority as well? Absolutely. I used to be a board member of the Black Coalition for AIDS Prevention, and many of the people who come here from the Caribbean still have the sense of, of exclusion and homophobia that came from their home countries. Uh, it contributes to increasing HIV and AIDS rates in the, the Toronto's black communities. So to have a conversation that can change attitudes in the Caribbean can also help to empower people and change attitudes here, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. The links are not, they're very blurred lines. Yes, yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you.